to the sanctuary, Tyler Town First Baptist Church, the Cathedral of the De Deliverance. We pray that, every, that God, that we find you doing well and God's blessings upon your life and upon your family. We pray that all who are out there that's first responders, that's doing all that you're doing, we continue to pray for you and all that you continue to do to help us, help us get through this place. We continue to pray for those families who had loved ones who transitioned during this time and who have ones who are fighting uh, the coronavirus at this particular time. We pray for each and every one of you. And we pray that the grace of God continues to abide, continues to abide uh, with you, no matter where you are, no matter what part of the country or whatever nation that you're in, that God's grace is truly sufficient in every season and every situation. We pray that even right now, that his hand is upon you and upon your loved ones to keep you safe in the place that you're in right now, that you will continue to pray for others as God does what he does in your own life. This morning we want to continue, and I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Habakkuk, chapter number 3. The book of Habakkuk, chapter number 3. I want to look at that uh, in conjunction with 1 Peter, chapter number 4. Uh, and, I and I title this message, We Must Finish. We must finish. The book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk certainly is an Old Testament prophet. And in, in chapter number three, I looked at that and I was actually in awe of his writing because of how he, he describes God creation when God showed up on the scene and how the creation reverenced him uh, so much. I'm going to begin reading at verse number uh, one. It said, prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Uh, he said, oh Lord, I've heard your speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. He had rays flashing from his hand. And there, and there his power was hidden. Before him was, went pestilence. And fever followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and startled the nations. And the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills bowed. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of the of cushion in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian tremble. At the presence of the Lord our God. O oh Lord. Were you displeased with the rivers? Was your anger against the rivers? Was your wrath against the sea? That you rode on your horses, your chariots of salvation. Your bow was made quite ready. Oath was sworn over your arrows. It goes on and says, you divided the earth, earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and trembled. The overflowing of the waters passed by. The deep uttered its voice and lifted its hands on high. This is how God's creation began to respond to him. Said the sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went. At the shining of your glittering spear. You marched through the land in indignation or in anger. You trampled the nations in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for salvation with your anointed. You struck the head of the house of the wicked by laying bare the from foundation to neck. You thrust through with your own arrows the head of his villages. They came out like a whirlwind to scatter me. Their rejoicings were like feasting on, on the poor in secret. You walked through the sea with your horses, through the heap of the great waters. When I heard my body tremble, my lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered my bones, and I trembled myself in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade them with his troops. I want to concentrate on this. He said, down at the bottom, it's a, it's a hymn of faith, verses number 17 and 18. He said, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, 
Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's from the book of Habakkuk. I want to read from 1 Peter chapter number 4, verses 12 through 14. It said, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you were reproached, if you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and the God and God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he's glorified. First Peter chapter number four. And when I began to look at these, I began to just meditate on the word itself. And when it was that you're on your way through some place. And God is taking you somewhere. And sometimes you don't always understand. When we look at even the environment that we're in right now. We don't, and don't always understand all of what's going on. But things are transpiring. Uh, we start looking and calling on God. Because we don't know Lord you have to show us now. How to walk this thing out. Because we don't all the way know what's getting ready to happen but we do know that as long as we're in you it's going to turn out for our good we do know that there's nothing that's going to happen that you don't know about already uh, we do know that when you show up in your creation that even your creation bow down before you the rivers lift up its hands and it applauds you because you are God so when we see it now uh, we see you moving in a way that we've never seen you move before. Now remember Joshua said we haven't been this way before. But we're on our way somewhere and the key is not just in the starting. But the key is that we got to go all the way through. Uh, and when certain things begin to happen that we don't understand. Somewhere we have to bow a knee and begin to talk to you about it. Because you had to give us wisdom for our moment. When it doesn't appear, oh yeah, when my situation is contradictory to your promise, I know what you promised me, uh, but I know what I'm looking at. And now my faith has to shift to see that whatever you promised me, you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of a man that you have to repent. So as I walk this journey out now, oh yeah, bye. as we go through this place where we are right now, the summer said, I'm going to look to the hills from which come at my help. Uh, because my help comes from you, oh God. In a moment such as this, such as this, uh, my heart will not fear because my trust is in the Lord my God. And now that you're on the scene, I'm going to lift my hands and give you glory. I'm going to lift my voice and I'm going to give you praise. But what I don't know, Lord, is what is what will happen. But what I do know is how to praise you in the middle of it. So right in the middle of what we're going through right now, COVID-19 and everything else, I choose to lift my hands in the sanctuary. I choose to lift my hand there sitting on my couch. I choose to bless you because you're God all by yourself. And as long as you're doing what you're doing, the Bible said, in you I live. In you I move and I have my very being. So where I am right now is just in the place where you brought me so I could give you glory. No matter what's happening in my life right now, I'm going to keep my eyes on you. Because as long as I'm focused on you, the Bible said you're the author and the finisher of my faith. So whatever's got to go on on the in between, since you authored it and since you're going to finish it, I just have to trust you in the in between place. With the part that I don't know, I just trust in you. I just choose to believe that everything you told me, when I pick up your word, I find comfort in the word that if you brought David through, you'll bring me through if you brought them through back then 
Spain, if you brought Israel through, you can bring America through now. You can bring Italy through right now. You can bring Spain through right now. And COVID will not prevail. But there is a God that's about to be exalted in the earth. Your word is declared in Psalm 46. I will be exalted in all of the earth. I will be exalted. When everything gets to going down, men going to know my strength. They going to know who I am. They going to know I am the sovereign God. And there is no other God. When they get through calling on Baal and get through calling on everything else, sooner or later they going to come to know just like it was in Elijah's day. There is no other God. Call on him all day. Call on him all night. Call him till the sun go down and he still can't answer. Why? Because he's not a living God. I come to tell somebody this is a time it's a time when the believers are about to be dressed in a new level of strength it's a time when your garments are about to be changed you're about to take off the garments of mourning and put on some garments of dancing cause God is gonna bless you right in the middle of where you are right now I know you didn't understand it sometimes it was a little bewildering but God said just trust in me just hold on to my word and see don't I bring it to pass see don't I bless you because I said I would when the nations are in darkness you're going to be standing in light because my name is up on you I got you written in the palm of my hand I'm going to do what I told you I'm getting ready to do I had to let some darkness show up for some light to be born so now light is here darkness got to back up sickness got to dissipate COVID got to leave cancer got to give you got to give way to where my promise is so here I am now standing on looking at the nations and I refuse to let the devil get victory in this moment right now cause since I'm God I just let him show up so he can show his hand now I can deal with him the way I wanted to deal with him you watch 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 in the place hey Abusha Habakkuk said there's a place where your faith has to occupy space. Let me say it again. There's a place and a time when your faith got to occupy space. What are you saying, Pastor? When you can't see nothing, huh? when it don't look like nothing is happening, when it don't look like it's producing, look at like it's going contrary. Habakkuk said, "Look at he said, look at this. This is what I see with my natural." He said, "Ain't no figs. The figs ain't blossoming. Ain't no fruit on the vine. Ain't no calla in the star. It looks real bad right now. But that's not the end of the story. That's why you ought to praise God right in the middle of it, cause you know the." story is not over it's just part of the story I don't see nothing producing I don't see nothing doing what it's supposed to be doing but when I look at God his word is still true the Bible says his word is already settled in the heavens I mean ain't nothing gonna change about what he said whatever he said then it's gonna manifest now because he said it he don't need nobody to approve it he's God all by himself and my Bible says when he could swear by no other he swore by himself cause there was none greater so when God gives you a promise it doesn't matter what it looks like doesn't matter what people sound like doesn't matter who's not with you it just means God's gonna do it all by himself watch him Habakkuk in, in chapter number 2 in Habakkuk chapter number 2 God tells Habakkuk something that's important he said, write the vision down. Make it plain. I came to talk to somebody. He said, write the vision down. Whatever I told you, write it down. You're going to need to write your vision down. Why is that important? Because there are going to come some days when there ain't going to be no cow in the store. 
There's going to come some days when everything going to look contrary. There's going to come some days when the wind start blowing and you ain't going to know what to do. But if you ever think about, I wrote the vision down. I can go back and get to the vision. When I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing, I go back to the vision. What you're supposed to be doing. Just rebuild the old ancient ruins. Just raise up the age old foundations. Just, cut, just repair the breaches. Just rebuild families and restore some broken lives that's what the vision said when I don't understand nothing else I just return back to the vision God what did you say you said this ministry is going to touch Mississippi it's going to touch the nation the state and the world God you're going to do something out of Tyler Town that don't make no sense so when it don't look like him watch watch him watch him he said I'm in the season I'm in the season and just a couple of months ago, just a couple of months ago, I got a pear tree in my front yard. And just a couple of months ago, if you looked at the pear tree, it looked like it was dead. Just a couple of months ago, if you went to the pear tree, wasn't no fruit, wasn't no blossom, wasn't no bloom. If you looked at the pear tree, you would say, just cut it down. It's ugly. Don't look like nothing you want to keep. But if you look two months later, if you go look at it right now, the tree is green. Leaves everywhere. Fruit on the tree. Because it was going through its season. I came to tell somebody, don't you die in your winter. Spring is coming. Don't you quit right now. Because there's something on the other side of this. That when God brings you out of this, you're going to see some fruit on your vine. You're going to see some fruit on your tree. And God is going to show who he said you're going to be. Don't worry about what you're going through now. God is impacting your spirit man now. It's not your natural. It's not your flesh. Your flesh is getting no pleasure out of it. But your spirit man now is about to leap again. Your spirit man now is about to come forth again. The Bible said the spirit of a man shall sustain. Shall sustain. Comes a time when the shift has to occur. And I'm no longer dependent upon what I feel. I'm not going by what I see. But God said, he that dwell in the secret place. He said, he that dwells. If you just come in and just habitate. Just come in and take a seat. Just come in and sit down for a moment. I'm going I'm to show you what I'm getting ready to do. He said in Revelation chapter number four. He said, come up higher. I'm going to show you things that are yet to come. You haven't seen these yet. I'm about to take you to higher. To court my side. I thank God for be him being God. Because there's something he's about to show right now that nobody expected. There's some things he's about to do right now that the devil can't stop. There's some things he's getting ready to do right now that the false prophet lied about. But God is about to show himself mighty. I don't care what nobody say. I know as long as you're in Jesus, God got your back. I know as long as you're in Jesus, angels are assigned to you. I know as long as you're walking with Jesus, it don't matter about COVID-19. I'm coming through COVID. I'm coming to the next phase in my life. There's some. Pro watch, watch, watch this, watch this. Cause when I look at, when I look at the fig trees, and when he looked at all the other stuff, he said the olive, the labeled olive failed. It didn't produce no oil. It didn't produce. It was a season. Oh yeah, that double shut There comes a season when God will remove everything that you depended upon. So you'll trust him. There come a season in God. When you remove I I'm talking to somebody here. When he began to shift things and what was common 
what was normal, what was normality, now it began to shift. And God said, I'm about to do something new in you. But then Habakkuk said, somewhere in the middle of going through a trial, there's a time when you go from, from, from natural carnal to spiritual. Somewhere in the middle of it, the shift has to occur. Somewhere in the middle of it, as the old saints used to say, you learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Somewhere in the middle of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Doesn't mean something was wrong with what you had. But he said, I got to teach you how to just lean and depend on me right through here. You got to know my voice. Habakkuk said, I heard the voice and I tremble. Just the mention of the voice made him tremble. He said, rottenness set up in my bones. I didn't know how to handle the moment when you spoke, God. But I stayed right there. But what I did do, I figured out how to praise you in it. I didn't know what to do. So I did what I knew how to do. I knew how to throw up my hands. I knew how to lift my voice. I knew how to praise you in spite of what I was feeling in the moment. I knew the praise got your attention. I knew the praise brought you in the midst of the praiser. And since I was going to praise you, I knew you had to show up somewhere. And if you show up, you were going to execute judgment on behalf of every enemy. So now, God, I begin to lift up my... Oh, yeah, bye. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. So in the middle of that, in the middle of this, I heard Peter speaking. Oh, yeah. I heard Peter speaking because Peter come to rescue my mind because when you're going through and the Bible talks about the fiery darts that the enemy will send at you but he talks about you having a, a shield of faith but Peter helps me in my mindset Peter helps every believer when they're going through their most difficult time and going through trying times when you when you got a COVID-19 loved one in the hospital and you can't go in the hospital Peter talks to your mind when you're going through stuff in your life and you don't know what it's gonna come out like Peter began to talk to your mind Peter can't talk to you before Peter can talk to you now if he hadn't gone through some things he couldn't talk to me but since he's gone through some things now and Peter's on the other side now he's inspired to write because the Bible said all scriptures given by inspiration of God so God now inspires Peter let me tell you something every now and then every now and then you ought to shout because your neighbor came through every now and then you ought to shout because your mama made it through every now and then you ought to shout because your friend came out of that situation because now they can tell you something that you might not know. Now they can give you some information that you did not have. Now they give you revelation about God that you did not have. Because they went through something. And they gained the revelation of the moment. Watch Peter. He began to talk. He began to talk to the mind. And he says, beloved. He said, don't think this is strange. He said, what you're going through? This is not strange. He said, this is just part and parcel of your journey. Whatever you're going through right now, uh, God, whatever you're working right now, I'm just going to receive it by faith because I don't know all of what you're doing, but I know you're doing something in my life right now. I can't even tell nobody what you're doing. It's so confusing right now, so twisted and complicated that I can't even explain it right now. You can't explain why it is that you're being um, misunderstood in the moment. You can't explain why you can't understand the principle at the moment. You can't even explain why you are where you are in this moment. But God is working something out. And Peter said, don't think it's strange. You know how it is? How it is? When you think, when you think, you understand God. When you think, you came out of something. Matter of fact, let me digress for a moment. Let me just pull, pull just one little thing out of last week's message. And I want to open it up for you. Just give me, if you just give me a moment. 
Remember we talked about Paul and how it was that he got, got bitten by the snake. How it was that he went and got some sticks and he bought the sticks back and he put them on the fire. And when he put them on the fire, the heat came. When the, heat, when the, fire, when the sticks got on the heat, the, the viper came out and it latched onto his hand. And I, I thought about that and I, I kept walking and thinking. I kept walking and thinking. I kept walking and thinking. And there were some things that I didn't see last week that I saw this week. First of all, Paul was doing a good thing when he got bit. He wasn't bothering nobody. He wasn't talking about nobody. He was just trying to keep a fire going. So he went and got some sticks. And he bought the sticks back. Now, the other thing with this, that was the first thing. He was doing a good thing when he got bit. You can be doing a good thing and get hurt. But watch this. The next thing I saw was the snakes that Paul was carrying that thing so close to him all the time. Because when he picked up the sticks, he picked up the snake, but the snake didn't bite him. Uh, you don't hear me. There's something that you got close to you that you don't know that's dangerous to you. You don't even know they're right there up on you. But you got it when you picked up something else. And it ain't, watch this. The snake never tried to bite him until the heat got turned up. Oh, you don't hear me. I'll explain it. There's something the devil wouldn't try until you took this next step. There's some things he wouldn't even try to do to you. Didn't care until you stepped into your next level. But when you stepped into your next level, the heat got turned up. When you decided for God I'll live and for God I'll die, when you made a commitment wholeheartedly and the heat got turned up, then the enemy tried to destroy you. Isn't it amazing? But the whole time, the whole time, he had that snake right there next to him. And the snake never bothered him. He was carrying him. And he never tried to bite him. Only when he turned the heat up. Oh, yeah. Only when you made a real decision. Only then did the enemy attack you like he's attacking you right now. But that's what he didn't understand. You ain't the same as you was six months ago. And so you can withstand a little bite right now. The Bible said he shook him out. He never even panicked. Uh, I feel like shouting in here. I came to encourage somebody this ain't no time to panic baby whatever it is you're going to be able to shake this thing off in this season I know it don't look like much right now but you're going to be able to shake it off I know it don't seem like much right now but you're going to be able to shake it off I know it came to kill you but it ain't going to kill you I know it came to destroy what you had but it won't destroy you God is about to show you just what he placed in you that what the deposit he made was greater than what the enemy could do to you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Don't fear no man in this season. God! Watch him. Watch him. And this was when Peter wrote this. He made sure he made sure we understood who he was talking to. He said, Beloved, not an enemy, not an enemy, not a terrorist, not a threat. I'm not writing this to them. No, I'm writing it to believers. He said, don't think it's strange. Some things you got to go through. Some things you got to go through to get to. Remember David in Psalm 23. He said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. He said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Don't forget, when you're going through, that God, God is with you. No matter how much stuff gets shaken, no matter how long the shaking lasts, you just know God is with you while he's shaking he's shaking some things off while he's shaking he's shaking some things loose and whatever cannot stay was not meant to stay but whatever was supposed to stay when the shaking stop it's still gonna be where it's supposed to be because God is making something new I remember oh my god can't take you everywhere but I'm gonna take you somewhere 
he told Jeremiah in 18, Jeremiah 18, he said, I want you to get up and go down to the potter's house. Because when you get there, I want to show you something. I want to show you, Edebo Shata. I want to show you something, I feel. Go down there and watch him. There's a man sitting at a wheel. And he's making something. And the reason he's making something, because the first thing he made had a defect in it. So he had to break that thing to make something else. He broke it. He didn't throw it away. He just broke it so he can make it better. So he can remove the imperfection. So God will break it. Remember, oh, you're sick, Katie. They both are too much to tell you all in one day. They went to Emmaus. Remember when they went to Emmaus? Jesus went with them to Emmaus. When he got in the house and in the room, he broke. The Bible said he took the fish and he broke it and he blessed it and he gave it. Remember when he was outside with the multitude? He took the bread, he broke it, he blessed it, and he gave it. It's a principle of God. Whenever God gets ready to take you to your next level, he's going to break you before he gives you to your next level. You're going to go through a place of break before he can give you to anybody you're going to cry some tears you're going to have some lonely nights you had to trust God you're going to pray like you never prayed before because God is getting ready to take you to your next it's alright he said beloved he said beloved he said I've been where you've been I've been where you've been he said don't think you're strange just cause you're being tried in the fire. Every real believer is gonna be tried in the fire. Real gold is tested by fire. Real things are tested by fire. Real relationships are tested by fire. Real friends are tested by fire. Real, come on, I'm ready, Jay. We can take it to another level now. Real people are going to be tested by fire. You ain't going to know who's around you until you go through what you go through and find out somebody moved away from you because they couldn't handle your fire. You ain't going to know who did what they did and why they did what they did until you turn up the fire a little bit. I know Emerald used to say when he was cooking here, we're going to take it up a notch. It's time now God's about to turn it up a notch. And the devil going to know. And demons going to know. And imps going to know. That beloved, we don't think it's strange. Just because we're going to this place right now, our hearts will not fear. We're going to finish what we started. Just like we began. Let me tell you where we are in this whole COVID-19 thing. Because I know a whole lot of people got a whole lot of things to say. And I ain't talked about it a whole lot because it's not that important. Not that we don't, we want people's lives to be spared. Trust me. We're praying for every person. Trust me. But I ain't giving the devil no more glory than what he deserves. And that's none. I, I, this is what I want to tell you. That we, if you were running a quarter uh, a race around the track and you're running a quarter, it's four 110-yard dashes. But right, right about now, we're turning that corner on that last 110 right about now we're turning that corner coming out of this thing right about now don't give up hope now you got to finish what you started show them who God really is in your life tell them what faith you really possess right now show them that you didn't lie and God don't lie show them that you still got the strength that you said you have show them that you yet still believe cause can I tell you something there's a blessing coming out of this God's gonna bless coming out of this the devil can't mess and God don't bless her. God's gonna bless somebody on the way out. Watch, I'm almost done. He said, Beloved, he said, thinking not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. He said, Let me talk to you. He said, I've been in some places, I've seen some things, I've been tried by fire. Some places he said, I failed. When Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, I was by the fire and I failed, but I got back up again. I came to talk to somebody who faith may have been trying to dwindle, who, come on, the enemy been trying to try you, but your faith is occupying space now. Now your faith is being rekindled now. Now your words are true now. God, give me one more chance, and I'm going to tell them just who you are in my life. God, show us in America how to call up on your name without hesitation and reservation. God, call up on, let us call up on your name until everything shakes.
takes up the way it's supposed to. God, let us call on your name. Now, yeah, bye. Watch. Watch this. You know how it is when you have a situation and you show up and show up in your life and you really want to get rid of the situation as fast and quickly as you can. You really do. If it's pain in your life, you want that remedy as quickly and as fast as you can. If you got hurt somewhere, you want that remedied as quickly and as fast as you can. But every now and then, God don't just bring you right out. If he brought you right out, you get right back into something else. So sometimes he'll let it linger. Mm. Let me tell you how I know what I know about God, some of what I know about God. You remember Moses when he called him? And God tell Moses, stick your hand in your cloak. And Moses stuck his hand in. And when he brought it out, he had leprosy on it. And God told him, stick it back in there. And he stuck it back in there. And it came out perfectly well. That's how quickly, Shabba, God can heal. But every now and then, God don't heal that quickly. Because if he heals us that quickly, we'll get right back into something else. Every now and then, he'll let some thing linger until my will firms up. Till I go to another level in the spirit and say, I'll overcome this. I'll ride up on that. I won't worry about the serpents or the scorpions. I'm going to let God do this for me. Every now and then, he'll cause your faith to arise. When your money won't do it. When your friends can't do it. When your phone can't connect, God will cause you to learn how to depend on Him in a moment that He calls you to. Cause I got Watch this. Hear me when I say it. He's firming up somebody's will now. He's helping somebody make up their mind now. I'm talking about really make up their mind now. He's having somebody to see. You know, when I let you go before, you just wanted some relief. But this time, you got to have some behavior change. This time, you got to change the way you think. I got to let this thing hang around for a moment till you understand you can't control it and money won't buy you out of it. I know the Bible said money is a defense, but when God is coming, watch, watch, because he's going to get the glory. He's going to get the glory mm. out of this. Peter said this. He said, when these things happen to you, he said, you rejoice with exceeding joy. When they're talking all about you, when you're being sick and you don't know, they got you on the ventilator. And all you do, all the strength you can muster. And maybe all you can do is twinkle your fingers. But my fingers gonna give him praise. If I can't do nothing, I'm move my toes and my fingers won't move. My toes gonna give him praise. My body out of both satire. It's gonna give God praise. My mouth, when I'm able to open my mouth and they bring me off the ventilator. Before I open my mouth, I'm gonna lift up my hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. You gave me one more chance. You didn't let me go out like that. And now I'm gonna do it. Every now and then, every now and then, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Every now and then, He causes you to separate for the purpose of God. You wouldn't have heard what you heard if you hadn't been separated for the purpose of God. You wouldn't have heard what you heard if your phone would have answered. You wouldn't have heard what you heard if they had not talked about you and you had to separate yourself. But look at God. He said, that was me. I was frustrating plans of the enemy. He was trying to distract you, but I was frustrating his plans. He was trying to get you off track, but I was frustrating his plans. They couldn't find you. Couldn't get in contact with you. Why? I was frustrating the on your way home because you got to finish he said if you are reproached for the name of Christ blessed are you 
When people don't understand why you stand like you stand. When people don't understand why you believe like you believe. When people don't understand, even family members, why you choose to trust in God like you do. And they can understand why you do what you do. How you give all that for God? How do you do all that for God? Because God did all that for me. And since I understand that, it's easy for me to do this. If you're going to do anything now, it ought to be predicated based on the love you got for God. And let God use you. Let your, light, let your life be a light that God can use to shine in the darkness. So now when people don't understand, I, watch, watch. Peter said, Peter said, mm. he said, it's just a struggle, but it's temporary. Tell your neighbor, it ain't going to last. This thing I'm going through right now, it ain't going to last. This COVID-19, it's not going to last. That cancer report, it's not going to last because your faith is beginning to arise and occupy the space where doubt used to be operating the place where the report came in now your faith is beginning to operate in space and driving everything else out when your mate don't understand when your daughter don't understand children don't know it's something about God that said don't worry about it they gonna know when you come out on the other side of this they don't understand it now but they gonna understand it better by and by I came to tell somebody that by and by is now now faith is let faith arise let your faith go up and grab what God got for you I see a finish line we got to finish now we ain't gonna just make it across we gonna finish strong now our faith is intact our principles are in tow God is in oh yeah both sat watch 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 him watch him watch this he said, if you are a reproach for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory. Hear me. For the spirit of glory and of God. When you go through your test, when you pass through the waters, when you go through the fire, when you get through all of that, he said the spirit of glory is going to rest upon you. The spirit of God is going to... Hiya, bukura masa. Hear me, hear me. Tasha, I'm finna give you a prophetic word. God, hey, Shanda, he's about to shift your worship to a whole nother level. He's about, Shanda, he's about to shift some things. And in shifting some things, it's going to take your worship deeper because you got to reach higher now. That's another level that God is calling, calling you to now. And now he's going to shift some. Remember Jesus told his disciples, he said, we're going to the other side. And in the middle of their going, there was a storm that showed up. If you can remember, hear me when I tell you this. If you can remember in the storm what he said on the shore that you're going to the other side. When faith, I don't know what's getting ready to happen, but I know faith is getting ready to be tested. But you can't get promotion until your faith has been tested and tried. Shanda. Let me take it to a whole nother level. Let me come to where you are. You've been feeling some things, sensing some things, and not sure about some things. As of recent, I'm talking about as of late. It's going to birth another level of worship. It's going to birth a deeper level of worship. Praise is wonderful, but it's about to birth a deeper level of his worship down off in your belly. God is calling you to a next place in him. But in order to go up, you first got to go down first. And God got to establish your ayabo, a greater See, Watch this. If we're going to build 
a 14 story building you got to go 14 stories down in the ground to sustain the 14 story that's going to be up above the ground so for where God is getting ready to take you now he's got to take you down first to bring you back up to another level now and when it comes out the flow of the spirit the flow of the spirit is going to be different your eyes are going to be different you're going to see something different you're going to call different you're going to pray why why God because the kingdom needs it now the kingdom needs it now this church this people has to go to another level now why because the kingdom demands it now the region demands it now the people in the region demands it now God is demanding it right now there is a place there is a place in God There's some rumblings hey uh, there's some rumblings that's happening in the spirit now there's some rumblings here they both shut up and God is causing the rumblings now God is about to cause whatever that's supposed to be shaken to be shaken but you got to know where your faith lies you got to know who your who your source is in this hour men out of both flesh will not be able to sustain you God and God alone watch 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 two things are about to happen there's about to be a separation and you're gonna find those that run after things and you're gonna find those that run after God you there's gonna be a separation there's gonna be a group that run after things because they're gonna be appealing to the eye but there's gonna be another group that understand if I go after God things gonna show up anyhow there's a group that's about to arise right now they got the heart of God they want nothing but what God wants they want oh yeah, bro, they've been calling on God they've been in the press oh yeah, bro. they've been down off in the press and now the all is about to flow there's an anointing about to come in the land not just in Tyler Town, but in the land that's about to cause things to be rendered now there's a God that's about to wreak havoc on the enemy now there's a word that's about to flow out of the mouth of babes now God is about to shift this whole thing right now there's a glory about to be revealed his glory I able his glory his glory you watch what I tell you as of today his glory is invading the earth now his glory his glory is invading the homes of believers now new strength new strength new strength new strength he's not gonna let you come up short you're gonna finish we're going to finish strong. We're going to finish strong. David said in Psalm 119, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not miss you, God. I don't want to miss what you're doing in this season. Bishop Paul Martin said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing, Lord, I want to be a part of what you're doing right now. I don't want to miss not one thing. Don't think it's strange. God keeps setting our mindsets. Remember he said in Philippians, he said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, together with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind and now Peter comes along and said beloved think it not strange when fiery trials show up 
as if some strange thing. Now, everything that you're going through, everybody who went to the next level had to go through to get to that next level. Don't think it's strange. What I'll tell you is this. Keep your eye. Mm. I'm going to pray right here that God caused scales to be removed from your eyes so you can see what a distraction looked like and you see what the purpose of God looked like so you'll be able to pursue after that you will know without shadow and without doubt what, what it is that God has called you to do in this hour. Whatever is going to be shaken away, it was supposed to leave you in this season. Whatever remains, God left it there for purpose. And he said, strengthen those things. Strengthen those who do yet remain. You got to know now that if you're going to pour into, pour into those that do yet remain. Seasons, times, places, things are going to shift. You will see it. Watch me. You will see it over the next few days. Shiftings taking place. You will see it Abu Shatta, among family members. Shiftings taking place. You will see the one that's pursuing after the things. And you'll also see the one that's pursuing after God. Because he's going to make it so very, very plain now. In the season, in the place. Your heart has to be after God. In the... Uh, yeah, boy. In Psalms 42, the psalmist says, As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants after thee, O God. He said in another place, he said, My soul, my soul will seek thee, O God. My soul. In a time of rest, in a time of rest, well, how can you rest in a season like this? In him I move. In him I live. In him I have my being. God, in this moment, he's bringing all things into alignment, divine alignment right now. Order. He's bringing it to the place. And his glory, he said, the Bible, Peter said this, he said the glory, the spirit of glory is going to rest Oh yeah, the spirit of oh, yeah. oh, devil. When the spirit of glory rests upon you, you have no fear. You have no fear. You don't walk in intimidation. You don't walk looking over your shoulder. You just know, since God is with me, He got me. You come on, the glory of the Lord. My praise. My prayer for you is that the spirit, read it in 1 Peter chapter 4, that the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rest upon you like never before. That you begin to understand when you're in the house by yourself, why it is that it seems like the house is full. It's because the spirit of glory is in the house with you. The spirit of God is present in that moment to let you know you're never alone that you're never by yourself he won't leave you he won't forsake you it's your place it's your time it's your time the glory of the resurrected christ be up on you now be up honorable shutter finish finish strong Finish, Adabu Shata. Everything he called you to, finish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power in this place. And I honor you, Lord. Lord, if I find favor in your sight Lord please hear my heart's cry 
I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I cross the hottest desert. I travel near afar for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king so lord if i find favor in your sight lord please hear my heart's cry i'm desperately waiting to be where you are i cross the hottest desert i'll travel near or far for your glory I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you. To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are, got to be where you are, I want to be where you are, got to be where you are. I want to be where you are, Lord. Got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. just to see you to behold you as my king i want to be where you are gotta be where you are because you are alpha and omega we worship you our lord you are worthy to be praised Cause you are Alpha 
and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We Praise, so we give you all. 